What's up, guys? This is Kyle from Wax Museum. And as you can see by the screen here, or as you can guess, this is another relic sourcing video. And there are a couple of reasons for that. Number one, I just really enjoy making this sort of video. And then number two, I got some feedback on my recent Dominique Wilkins videos about the, the Hardwood Classics tag that was in a card that was labeled as Game Worn. And people told me, well, that's stuff like this that makes me not trust Jersey cards at all. And I was really just trying to show you an exception and show you that you have to use context clues sometimes to do your own research when it comes to purchasing these things. I wasn't trying to erode your trust in memorabilia cards. So I'm thinking maybe today that this video could reverse some of that. It's not necessarily going to convince everyone. That's fine. But I just want to let you be more informed about what's out there, what kind of cards are created from that, where those jerseys were supposedly sourced from, so on and so on. So as you can see here, we've got a teal Joe Dumars jersey from the 96-97 season, and I've got some flawless cards up here as well. I'm going to talk about a lot of those later on. One of them I want to show you here, this is one that I own, and this is kind of where this whole relic study started from, and it started several years ago. So I identified the source for this jersey probably late 2018, and I decided to go on the blowout forums because there were a lot of cards from that 2017-2018 flawless set that I identified as having been purchased from Golden Auctions. And uh, although you see this Ron Harper warm up here was from Heritage, but later on in the thread, I talked about the ones from Golden Auctions. And there were two Joe Dumars jerseys in that auctions. The first one was from 96-97. It came with a pair of shorts. The second one was from 1998. Now, I was thinking at first that Panini might end up purchasing both of those, but as it turned out um, so far from all the materials that I've seen used, they only purchased the one on the left, which is that 96-97 uh, game-worn jersey. So in that thread that I made on the blowout forums, I did give you some visuals, but you know what? They were pretty lazy. Here's an example of what I did. I just had I took a picture with my phone, of my card held up to the screen to show you that some of those mesh holes lined up as well. So allow me a couple, well, four years later here to redeem myself and do more of an in-depth study. And then also some more pieces from that Jersey have come out in cards over the years. So I think I can do it justice now, but I do want to make a general observation here first, when it comes to Joe Dumars relic cards, um, anything that is before 2017 flawless and these i'm just talking pistons because i know he had some usa stuff as well anything pistons that is pre-2017 flawless is all going to be your traditional red white and blue color scheme whereas everything after that is going to be a mix of the traditional colors but then also this teal jersey which did have some black on the side i'll show that for you later so just know though anything as of this point that is teal is coming from the jersey that I'm telling you about today. So the first thing I want to do before I start matching that to specific parts of the jersey, I want to show you some of the sets that these pieces were used in. And it's not to say that, you know, this is not going to be in chronological order here, but I will start with the first one that I know of, which was 2017-2018 Flawless. So real quick here, this is the version that's numbered out of 25. You'll see some pieces in there that look similar to the other pieces. It's kind of like a big puzzle here. Um, I'll move through here. We have some of the patches that were numbered. First, the ruby out of 15. We've got three of the golds out of 10. We've got the emerald out of five. I can't find a picture of the one one somewhere. If you have that or if you have one that I'm missing, you know, I would love to fill in some of the pieces here. Even after this video is done, I keep these files on my computer. So just something to keep in mind. I'm always looking for help with that kind of stuff. Um, and then a lot of Joe Dumar stuff, Teal stuff was in some of the National Treasures relic sets. So we had lasting legacies. You see a number of different pieces here. And this is just a small sampling that I could find. We've got the retro material set. We had the clutch factor set. You see a lot of those, a lot of those 25, you know, I, I only found seven of them here. But, uh, or eight, that, how many is there? Seven. Yeah, seven of them here. And five of them look pretty similar. Um, some more sets here. We had National Treasure Century Materials and then National Treasures Treasured Threads. And then in addition to that, some of the 
um, you know, I don't want, I don't know what you want to call them cheaper or less desirable pieces, not really cheaper. I guess they are, they do end up being cheaper, but those ended up in some of these other products. Like, uh, I think that's Vanguard and select, and there's still that national treasures all decade. There's a 2018 status relic. And then we had some of the premium relics, which they're still surfacing, but we had this colossal logo, man, uh, this dual logo, man on the right side is from, I think 2020. So that was a more recent card. And then we've got this tag here that's from Select as well. So let's, you know, while we've got the logo men here, let's go ahead and start with that portion of the jersey. So we'll kind of work our way down from the top and then down to the shorts as well. So on the front of that jersey, we have that logo man. So I took the logo man and I blew it up so you can see the mesh holes there. So that is the logo man from the jersey. And I put it right next to the logo man from the card. And if you look around the head, you can see the mesh holes are the exact same. So this is the logo man from the jersey. Okay. And um, just, you know, some of you might be saying, well, don't they make all the logo man the exact same? No, the mesh holes are going to be at different spots on all of them. And then likewise, jerseys that have pinstripes, which I know this one doesn't, but jerseys that have pinstripes, the stripes are always in different spots. So no two jerseys that I've seen are exactly alike. That's also going to be important when we get to the horse section here, which is that, I don't know if you call it screen print or what you want to call that, but it's printed into that jersey. So let's go ahead and, and go into that horse section. We'll work our way down the jersey. So I've matched three of the flawless patches in there, and I've kind of superimposed them and put them at like 50% transparency. So you can see that not only do the patches fit, but the mesh holes line up. So this is once again, the same Jersey. So I'm not, now that I've established that I'm not going to line up the mesh holes with every piece that I show you from here on out. I still will do it with a lot of the pieces, but not every single piece. So let's continue working our way down that Jersey. You have that Pistons logo. You can see my card on the right there, uh, which I didn't match it up in, entirely. I needed to shrink that patch piece a little bit, but my, uh, that's how I initially matched it up to this jersey. I matched up those mesh holes to this picture from Golden. And also shout out to Golden Auctions for, for having large pictures of their jerseys. It makes it a lot easier to do this. Heritage pictures are great. Golden pictures are great. Gray flannel pictures are awful. So unfortunately, Panini loves buying stuff from gray flannel. So it's harder to do this with a lot of jerseys. In this case, though, it was Golden. So it worked out. So you see all those pieces including on the bottom there, a couple of weaker 101s. I guess that flame one is all right, but that bottom 101 is a pretty weak patch, uh, but that was consistent for retro materials that year. They didn't really put many of the premium pieces in the 101 cards. Um, and then we'll work our way further down the front of that jersey. So we have that number. I've identified two of the pieces from there for sure. I think that piece on the right is going to be one, but it's just a plain white and black piece. So it's hard to line up exactly and then we have the tags on the front of the jersey. And to me, when I superimpose this tag from Select, uh, it looks like it goes with this front jersey tag. I will say it could also be from the shorts because there's another Pistons logo tag in the shorts. But I believe, I looked at the threads, I believe it lines up with this one on the front. I can't guarantee you that 100%, but it is one of those two tags there. And I haven't seen the rest. I'm guessing they've come out. There was a treasured tag set in National Treasures that had a Dumars tag. I can't find a picture of it. I'm sure it's been pulled probably by now, but uh, I'm not seeing it anywhere. So once again, if you do have those premium Dumars pieces from 2017 on, please share those with me. If I don't have them in here, I'd, I'd love to go over that. Okay, the rest of the front of the jersey, because there is still some material that we haven't covered yet. If you look, this is a signed jersey. And what I've noticed about Panini lately, especially as they're working through the rest of their inventory, they did use signed jersey pieces as prime relics. And I'm not talking about like 2012 Immaculate where they had a signed jersey set called Immaculate Marks. I'm talking about they're using them now in place of patch cards. Like they did it with the Wilt Chamberlain patches with some of them in 2017 Flawless. And I'm seeing it on some other stuff as well. So I have never seen those in a Joe Dumars card yet as of this point. Doesn't mean it hasn't been in there, but I trust me, I looked high and low. I haven't seen it yet. So I'm guessing 
those are going to come out in a set later. So you might be on the watch for that. It might be fun to kind of predict and see if that's going to happen or not. Okay. I also zoomed in on the kind of the armpit area because you can see the uh, the armhole, the like the sleeve hole, and that's the same type of piecing that's around the neck hole there. And then you can also see this, uh, I, I guess it's gold and maroon piece that goes down the side. You can see they're made of different materials. So sometimes they'll just um, stretch those out and put those in the flawless jumbo patches. So I have that on that, that uh, kind of in the middle of the screen here, or sometimes they'll cut the smaller pieces up. Um, notice the thin, I don't know if you want to call that gold or orange, um, notice that thin line. So that's going to be important later on because we're going to distinguish these from some other patches that look very similar to those. So those were used either, like I said, in the armholes or the neck holes. These other pieces here that you see on the right side were used probably on the, the sides here. It's either on the front or the back of the jersey because it wraps around, or it could also be on the shorts. So there's no way really to differentiate the um, those pieces of, of a jersey or a short. So just know it's it's a type of material. And then also, if you see a black Joe Dumars plain rel uh, jersey relic, then that's from the side of this jersey. So that is a little bit rare. I know, you know, back in the day, we used to consider that kind of a premium. If you were a player collector, you, you tried to get the different types of the jersey. So I thought I would include that as well. Okay, let's go ahead and move to the back of the jersey before we get to the shorts. So let's do the back of the jersey here. And I put these pieces on the side. I didn't match them up. I believe they're all from that number on the back of the jersey because they look a little bit bigger. And the number on the back is generally bigger than the number on the front. And that is the case here with this Dumars jersey. But let's take a closer look at this nameplate. And I didn't put every nameplate piece that I found in there, but I put uh, four of them. So you can see, and once again, I, I made them transparent and I, I put the transparency at 50%. Uh, for the most part, it, it looks like they line up to me. I know all the mesh holes that I put in there, they line up. So uh, once again, not that I have to prove this is the same jersey by now, but you can see exactly where these pieces come from. And you know, this might be a spoiler for a future video if I have the time. If we could get some um, pictures from that season that are high enough resolution, that could work to our advantage here where we're matching this stuff up, but I don't think we're going to be able to do that. Most of the 90s photos I've seen aren't that great. All right, let's move on to the shorts now. We're almost done. If we're looking at the shorts here, once again, you've got the um, this side material and then the top material. Now, the difference though on this is if you'll look on this treasured threads relic, the gold or orange or whatever, you, I don't know what you call it. I'm sorry, Pistons fans, but that line or that piece is thicker. Well, that means it's from the waistband of the shorts. And they got a lot of patches out of that. Just think, look, think about how big that waistband probably is and look how they're cutting that into really small, thin pieces. So we could have Joe Dumars patch cards even just from this pair of shorts for a long time. So they're very good about using materials and especially when they buy them in a lot together like this, it's, it's very cost efficient for them. And then, of course, you've got the piece that goes um, on the side. So I've got a picture of that as well. I mentioned the tags earlier. I don't know. I don't have pictures of any of the tags if those have come out, which I don't believe they have yet, but I thought I'd show you a close-up of those tags. And then I zoomed in on the Logo Man. A lot of people don't realize just because you have a Logo Man card doesn't mean it's necessarily from a jersey. Could be from a pair of shorts. Could be from a warm-up. Could be from a shooting shirt. So those logo man pieces are are all over the place. Well, once again, I zoomed in so you could see where the mesh holes are at. These mesh holes are not the same as the previous logo man I showed you from that jersey. So that was how I was able to differentiate that colossal logo man was from the jersey, whereas this duel here with Isaiah Thomas is from the pair of shorts. And that just came out, like I said earlier, I think is 2020-2021 uh, immaculate. I think that's what that sets from. Okay. We're almost done with the shorts here. Almost done with this video. There's really only one um, patch part left on the shorts here, which is this Detroit Pistons DP logo. And um, I didn't find very many of these clutch factor patches, but I figure they all got used up in that as well as some of those waistband pieces. These two pieces that I did find were very close to one another. 
It's part of the, uh, the bottom part of the letter P. Okay, so the last part of this video here, because this has been a, a point of contention in the past, and, and rightfully so. People have said, okay, you've tracked these jerseys down to Golden, or you've tracked them down to Gray Flannel, or you've tracked them down to some other major auction house. That's great, but some of these auction houses are selling items as game worn when maybe they're just pro cut versions or you know maybe they're game issued and they're labeling them as game worn. So we're we're really having to rely on someone's opinion here. And that can be questionable at times. So let's take a look at the provenance for this jersey and this pair of shorts from the Golden Auction. So first off, they came from a Pistons employee. So you can see the letter here on, on the left where he says, I, Alan Einstein, was the Pistons team photographer from 78 until 2016. And he talks about how he obtained memorabilia directly from the players. And he's he's describing this as a game-worn 1996-97 Pistons jersey and shorts. So if you know if you trust the photographer, which obviously he was close to the team, if you trust him, okay, then this you know you, this is game worn. Now who who's to say an equipment manager didn't give him or a, a player didn't give him a pair of team issued or, or player issued? You know we can't know that for certain, but uh, he says they're game worn. Now if you look on the right, then we've got somebody else giving their opinion later on. This was before it went to auction. And if you look at the bottom, they're saying after a thorough and personal examination of this game used uniform, it's in my opinion that it's authentic as described and can be attributed to being used by Dumars during the season. And they talk in that long write up about how it shows some game wear. So I think when you combine the photographer saying that he got it from the players and it is game worn and he had that open access with the fact that it does show some game wear, wear. You know, I think that there's, you know, I, I trust this jersey. I'm going to put it that way. I'm not telling you you should trust it. I know there are people out there that are bigger game worn collectors than I am. I just collect the cards. So, you know, you have to decide for yourself whether you trust this or not. But I, like I said, I wanted to give you some more context for today. So there you have it. If you like videos like this, because please, trust me, this took forever. This took way longer than I thought it would, but that's okay. I like this kind of stuff. If you like this stuff as well, go ahead and hit that like button. And then if you want to see more of these videos in the future, which I do have a few more in the works, let me know in the comments and maybe it will motivate me to put in the time to get those done as well. All right. Remember, there are new episodes of the audio podcast that come out every Thursday. And as always, thanks for watching.